Hello there, and welcome to another Mr. Pollock Biology video. Uh, we're back on biochemistry again. This time we're going on from last video on triglycerides, we're going to progress on, and we're going to be looking at phospholipids. Um, so this is something that's it's quite a straightforward little topic, but it's something that seems to catch out quite a lot of students, so I thought maybe this video might help some of you guys out at home uh, as well. So let's have a look at our objectives. We're going to describe the structure of phospholipids, we're going to understand the properties of phospholipids and we're going to explain why these structures called micelles and phospholipid bilayers form. So the first thing we should probably do is really explain what phospholipids are. Well, as the name suggests, they're a type of lipid, which we know from previous videos are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but in different ratios to uh, carbohydrates. And we learned last time that triglycerides can be broken down into fats and oils, which are solid at room temperature, and there's these other things called waxes and steroids that we don't really need to worry about. But phospholipids, these are what we're interested in today, and they are comprised of one molecule of glycerol, two fatty acids, and one inorganic phosphate group. So let's look at that in a bit more detail and really compare phospholipid structure with triglyceride structure. So if we take a structure of a phospholipid, um, uh, sorry, a triglyceride, this is what we did last video, so I'm just going to whiff through this nice and quickly. Um, so here's our glycerol and our fatty acids, which we show with an R group to represent the hydrocarbon chain that varies from fatty acid to fatty acid. Normally, when we represent them, we look, look at them like this, and we show here how three fatty acids undergo a condensation reaction with one molecule of glycerol to form... Um, three molecules of water in that condensation reaction, and that gives us our three ester bonds which form our triglyceride. Now, if we take that triglyceride and we look at how we can change it into a phospholipid, it's really quite straightforward. Um, most of the molecule is, is exactly the same. The only thing we do is re we remove one fatty acid, take that away, so we've got one less fatty acid, um, and instead of that fatty acid, we've got an inorganic phosphate group, which is PO4. Three minus if you're interested or a chemist. Um, and we just add that on in the place of the third fatty acid. Now because of the properties of the phosphate group and the fatty acids, they actually repel each other quite strongly. Um, so it, the, the phosphate head, or the phosphate group, rotates to the other side of the molecule. Um, so it's on the opposite side of the glycerol to the two fatty acid chains. The thing is, as biologists, we're relatively simple we don't need to worry about this whole structure. We can make things really simple. So by simplifying things, we can represent the phospholipid like this, where we've got um, the phosphate group, we've got the glycerol, and then we've got the two fatty acids as well. But even that is too complicated for us mere biologists. So instead, we're gonna try and represent it like this, where we've got the phosphate head in orange here, and then the fatty acid tails at the bottom nice and straightforward. The great thing about phospholipids, or the thing that makes them interesting and why it's quite interesting to look at them, um, is because they have some very interesting properties. Um, basically we say that a phospholipid molecule is amphiphilic, which means that it has differing properties uh, with regard to water. So the head, the phosphate head, is water-loving or hydrophilic whereas the fatty acid tail, they're hydrophobic, they hate water, they want to repel away from it, they want to get away as far as they can from it. And that has some really interesting consequences in biology. So if we look at those in a bit more detail, if we imagine that we've got a big old beaker of water kicking around, uh, let's, let's bring one in, um, and we drop a bunch of phospholipids into it, we would see that the, fat, the fatty acid tails, because they're hydrophobic, they want to get away from the water, whereas the phosphate heads, which are hydrophilic, they don't mind being in contact with the water, and they're quite happy to sit there and float around. Obviously, this isn't very realistic, because we can't do this sort of thing on, on a beaker scale to see this. Um, but what we do see is if we put a bunch of phospholipids in some water, um, if we put only a couple in, they form these structures called micelles, where water is excluded from the fatty acid tails as these fatty acids, um, sorry, as these phospholipids form a ring structure. And we call this ring structure a micelle. Now, if we add in more phospholipids, we start to see these other structures form that we call phospholipid bilayers. 
And these are absolutely essential in biology because they're going to be the basis of cell membranes that we'll look at in another video. So the bilayer basically excludes water from the fatty acid tails and makes sure that only the phosphate heads are in contact with water. And like I said, these phospholipid bilayers are the absolute basis of the cell membrane. So let's summarise this and make sure we're all absolutely happy with phospholipids. So phospholipids are made up of one molecule of glycerol, two fatty acid tails and one phosphate group or one inorganic phosphate head. The opposite ends of the molecule have interesting properties, they're amphiphilic, so that means that the phosphate head is water-loving, so we say it's hydrophilic, and the fatty acid tails, they are hydrophobic, they hate water and they want to stay away from it. And because of those amphiphilic properties, phospholipids will form micelles and bilayers which go on to become the basis of cell membranes. I hope this video has been really helpful you guys. Um, please like, comment and subscribe and keep tuned for more biology videos. Thank you very much. Bye bye.